admit that we haven't got a clue as to what is happening or what to do about it. Uh, leading economists from around here, Cambridge, have been recently publishing articles in which they say that the international economy is dimly understood, uh, that we may be heading into a third world style, 30s style depression, and we don't know what to do about it. Actually, the real crisis is much more fundamental, and I'll finish by uh, just giving two quotes that I think capture it <clears throat> rather well. One of them, both recent, one is uh, from an event that was organized by Jesse Jackson over Martin Luther King weekend in uh, January. This was an event in Manhattan uh, to support Bill Clinton in the moment of his uh, terrible trials. Uh, there were lots of celebrities who came and sort of admired one another and so on. Uh, among them <laughs> was the president of the New York Stock Exchange. I'm quoting from the press now. He told, New York Times, he told Mr. Clinton that Dr. King is surely smiling down on the gathering, recognizing how Clinton had benefited my little corner of southern Manhattan, which is quite accurate. Uh, other little corners of southern Manhattan fared rather differently, but the stock exchange on that, Mr. Clinton doubtless showered many benefits, so no doubt Martin Luther King is smiling down on him. Uh, that's a, uh, an appropriate comment uh, reflecting the realities of a political system in which in the last election, November 1998, 95% uh, data have just come in recently. 95% uh, of winning candidates outspent their opponents, meaning you could predict up to 95% accuracy who's going to win just looking at how much money they had. So it's not like Russia where you could predict 100% that it was going to be the Communist Party. It's only 95%. Uh, furthermore, if you look at the uh, contributions, uh, same data, uh, business contributions outspent labor contributions by about 12 to 1, which is highly misleading, remember, because labor represents way more people. Uh, and uh, individual contributions, though they're not measured, undoubtedly are skewed at least as much. So what that translates into, to put it into English, uh, is that a small, that a little corner of southern Manhattan and a couple of other little corners like it essentially purchase candidates uh, and put them in office and then set conditions that they're going to have to meet or else, uh, and also set the general framework for policy just by virtue of their power. Uh, uh, becoming the virtual Senate, as I mentioned, once uh, these instruments are in their hands. Uh, the second quote, of course, they also require a powerful state. They're very insistent on that. There has to be a powerful state uh, which will socialize risks and costs and will make sure that there's no unpleasant noises in the servants' quarters. So that's still got to be there, but not with its old functions. Second quote, last one, is from David Rockefeller, reflecting on the current scene. Uh, recall that David Rockefeller is at the liberal end of the spectrum. He's what's called the part of the establishment left, it's called, without irony, I should say. Uh, he's commenting on the reduction of the role of government in public affairs, uh, something that business has always favored, he says. Uh, side comment, the role of government means the role of the population, right? Uh, of all institutions that are around with all its flaws, whatever they may be. Government is the only one in which, at least in principle, there's some possibility of participation, often in practice, too. Uh, in the operations of General Electric, there are no pos possibilities in principle. So government is the one institution of the general institutional framework uh, in which people may have a role, sometimes do, uh, and that role is declining. Uh, business is happy about that, uh, but he says, while that reduction of uh, democratic participation is, of course, welcome, there's another side to that coin Somebody has to take government's place, uh, and business seems to be the logical entity to do it. Okay? That's Rockefeller. It's the, he goes on to say it's the responsibility of business to fill this gap made by the disappearance of democratic government. It's certainly not the uh, role of the public, that's for sure. That's the establishment left when 
you move over to the right, the message gets a lot harsher. Well, that's a pretty fair picture of the uh, current drift of policy. As I'm sure you know, corporations gained the right of persons through judicial activism early in this century. Uh, they're not ordinary persons like you and me. They're immortal persons. They have extraordinary power. Uh, unlike flesh and blood persons, they also demand the rights of states, and they get them. Under NAFTA, they've partially gained them. Under the MAI, they'd gain them still more fully. In fact, they would gain additional rights, uh, which are described as if they're innocuous, but they surely aren't if you think about them. Under MAI, these persons, uh, fictitious legal persons, are demanding what they call national treatment. That's a right that no flesh and blood person can claim. So under national treatment, General Electric can function freely in Mexico. But suppose that some flesh and blood Mexican tries to get national treatment in New York. No, that's not going to work. So this is only for fictitious collectivist legal entities. Those kind of persons get the rights of states, uh, the rights of national treatment. Uh, and uh, furthermore, they have a right and a responsibility to take over the functions of government. Uh, they must do that. Uh, that would therefore reduce democratic form still further. Uh, internally, they're basically tyrannies. I mean, I don't think that's in question. Uh, and they try to run the global society, including the sort of minimal market system, uh, in an integrated fashion. They do rely on the powerful states to make sure that they can get what they want. They also demand, and in large part gain, uh, the right to shape opinions and attitudes and beliefs. That's the role of the corporate media. Uh, and, in fact, the educational system to a large extent. That is, the, if the right to define what a human being is, what constitutes a human life, and do so. Uh, well, quite apart from the continuing assault against the proclaimed values of uh, democracy and human rights and freedom and all good things, uh, these tendencies, if they are tolerated, uh, could lead to quite serious and possibly even terminal catastrophes. That's only a speculation, of course. Uh, your speculations are as good as anybody's. Uh, what is not a speculation is that the tendencies don't have to be tolerated. Uh, that's a choice. You can make it, you can not make it. It's not a necessity. Uh, the ability to make that choice is roughly measured by your share in privilege more access to privilege you have, more of a choice you can make. It's also measured by the freedom of the society. Uh, that means that for people like us, uh, the options are wide open. Uh, and one thing we can be reasonably confident of, I think, is that neither conscience nor history is going to look favorably upon an unwillingness to face those decisions with uh, care and dedication. Okay, if people want to say something, maybe stand up so as maximize the chance somebody will hear you. Go ahead. Uh, well, uh, okay. You, you guys fight. Good. Some of us, uh, uh, part, of, part of the educational system that you've uh, described, not so much in detail, uh, right here in Massachusetts, uh, John Silver, someone from I believe you may have crossed swords, is uh, leading the war against public education. And he and his colleagues are using a variety of tactics. There's a lane bill for the Massachusetts uh, Congress, which will uh, take away collective bargaining rights for teachers. In effect, completely gut the unions. The um, point is that some of us uh, in the teachers' unions are going to confront Silver. Uh, and it occurred to me that if I'm not mistaken, he was on the Kissinger 
a commission that investigated, uh, purported to investigate uh, American policy in Latin America. Could be. Uh, I remember. Yeah. Okay. I was like, uh, let me put it another way then. Uh, I, 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 it was my recollection that you were going swords with him at one time or another. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. One of his favorite characters. Right. Uh, and of course, uh, Professor Zinn, I know some of the history yeah. between them. I was wondering if you had anything to say about a person who had. Uh, I, I, about him, you know, you make your own decisions. I don't. Excuse me. All right. Uh, I repeat, yeah. Uh, let me repeat the question. I mean, the core of the question, uh, the comment, really, is that uh, John Silver, who's what is he, chancellor of uh, something or the state system or something, is leading a campaign now to try to uh, undermine the teachers' union, uh, which is part of a general attack on the public education system. Is that right? Uh, then come some questions about our personal relations, which, you know, put to the side. Because uh, uh, this is a general issue. Uh, that this is, a, I, there's, I think, very little, a, a serious issue, very serious. One of the areas of government, meaning public participation, that still exists is the schools. And at the left end of the spectrum, people like David Rockefeller would very much like to get rid of this uh, government intervention in the economy, or as I'm told that the latest edition of uh, Paul Samuelson's economics changes the phrase to government interference in the economy. Now, tell me if I'm right. That would then introduce an important doctrinal assumption into the uh, uh, description. So we want to get rid of government interference in the economy like public schools which have all sorts of bad features, like they cultivate a sense of solidarity or of care for other people. Like if there's a public school system, that's an expression of the fact that you care whether the kid down the street gets an education. And that's a very bad thing because you're supposed to be, you know, you get this message from infancy on uh, through the television set and everything else, uh, that the only value of a human life is to maximize uh, what the advertising industry calls invented wants. So they're supposed to invent wants for you, and you're supposed to maximize them. And that's the only thing you're supposed to care about. Uh, not care about anybody else, you know, not care about uh, control of your life and work. That's out of the door. Uh, but maximize your own fabricated wants. Uh, and uh, the, public, the existence of the public school system is inconsistent with that because it's an expression of solidarity and care for others and compassion and all sorts of... Uh, ideals that are not supposed to exist in the system that is being created, the uh, ideological system that's being created. Uh, it's not only John Silber. There's a major assault across the board on public schools. I got an inkling of this a couple of years ago when uh, Elaine Bernard, who some of you know, sent me a, a, an investment brochure uh, from Lehman Brothers, uh, which was being sent out to their you know, prime investors or, you know, people who put a lot of money in and so on. And it was about new investment opportunities. And this one was about what they called EMOs. Uh, give you a second to figure out what that means. Uh, but the point is, you know, prison systems being privatized, the health system such as there was is being given to insurance companies with HMOs. There's still this residue, the educational system, so the next target is going to be EMOs, Educational Management Organizations, which will be privately run, publicly funded, of course. All this stuff gets publicly funded in one way or another, but the profits are privatized. Uh, and that will achieve great gains, for example, by hiring teachers who are non-union uh, uh, staff that's non-union, doesn't have to be paid decent wages, doesn't require any security uh, attempts, and so on and so forth. So it's very efficient uh, by some measure. Uh, and also it'll be a way of breaking down this uh, lingering sense of solidarity and mutual support that the public school system provides just by its very existence. You know. So I think you can expect a lot of such attacks, uh, not just on that, but on every other residue of human life that uh, reflects any value other than individual maximization of invented wants. Uh, anything beyond that is fundamentally unacceptable. Um, just for, for your information, um, this talk has filled a 
apparently filled three overflow rooms. So uh, congratulations.